What does God want for Christmas? You saw the video. Isn't that an awesome song? Yeah, Derek's got an awesome voice. What does God want for Christmas? Uh, I want to talk to you about this morning, and I want to start with an illustration that will help you see where I am going. How many of you have ever been on an airplane? Has everybody flown? Okay, we have a few people who haven't been on an airplane. Okay, I want you to imagine this situation. You're on an airplane, minding your own business, thinking about what you'll do when you land, when all of a sudden, one of the stewardesses comes up to you and says, congratulations, you're the lucky winner. How would you react to that? Yeah, the winner of what? And what did I do to win? Well, the stewardess explains that you have been chosen to land the plane. You have been chosen to land the plane. A serious situation. How would you respond? Not going to happen. Ain't going to happen. I'm sorry. I've never done that before. Then she explains to you that the pilot and the co-pilot have taken sick and there's nobody to land the plane. But the good news is the airlines have checked the backgrounds of everybody and they have found the most qualified person on that plane to land that plane and that just happens to be you. Congratulations. You're the winner. You get to land this plane. Well, that is exactly what happened that first Christmas to Mary. We hear her story so often that we forget what it must have been like for her. God came to her and said, congratulations, you're the lucky winner. You get to bear my son. That can be your gift to me. That's what I want from you this year for Christmas. We kind of forget there was a lot at stake for her too. We also forget that Mary can be an example for us because God this Christmas is coming to each one of us and says, you're the lucky winner. I've got something for you to do for me this Christmas. It can be your gift to me. It's what I want for Christmas from you. And uh, the truth is there's a lot at stake about how we respond to what God wants from us this Christmas. So today, let's look at Mary's story and see if we can learn some things about doing things that God wants us to do for Christmas, how it's important, and other things such as that. So turn with me to Luke 1, verses 26 to 29. If you're using a pew Bible, the page number is up there that can help you to find it, because we'd like to have you read along and follow along as we look at the story of Mary. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. In this story, it's not a stewardess who comes to Mary. Instead, it's the angel Gabriel, the one that God often uses to give a message that is important to people. And Gabriel greets Mary in a most unusual way. That's why we know something up here that is very special. The usual way that people greeted each other was the term peace. That's what the, the Greek word uh, usually is. Uh, remember, in Paul's letters, he greeted people, grace and peace to you, something like that. So usually, when an angel or anybody else greeted you, they would say peace. But that is not what this says. Do you notice that? It's not in English. It doesn't say peace. Instead, Gabriel uses the word rejoice. Uh, that's kind of the Greek word for congratulations. Be happy about this. I've got some good news for you. So Gabriel came to Mary with a kind of unusual greeting. It says, congratulations, you're the winner. Now, what do you think she's thinking? The winner of what? What did I do? What's going on here? So then Gabriel adds that Mary was highly favored. 
Now, that doesn't mean she was better than anybody. That's a Greek phrase that simply means she was chosen for something. In the Bible, people who are highly favored are people who are chosen for something, to do something, to receive something. In other words, Gabriel came to Mary and said, congratulations, you're the lucky winner. You have been chosen for something. Well, what was Mary's reaction? Her reaction was just the same as yours. The New International says that she was troubled. The Greek word means that her thoughts churned, kind of like if you were sitting at that airplane seat. I'm going to land this airplane. All kinds of stuff is going through your mind, trying to figure out what that was all about. So her thoughts went round and round trying to figure out what in the world is going on here. I have been chosen by God. Uh, why? For what? That kind of thing. All right, let's read on, verses 30 to 33. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have, been, you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Gabriel comes to Mary, and he does not say, you have been chosen to land an airplane and save everybody on board. Instead, he says to her that God needed her to give birth to Jesus. The Messiah was going to be born in a natural way, supernatural father, but a natural way. And Mary was the one who had been chosen to give birth to him. And this one would save everybody from sin. That's our real big problem, getting off track, like Matthew 1, 21 has to say. In other words, this is what God wanted for Christmas from Mary. I want you to be the mother of my son, and he will save the world. Now, I want you to think about that. But here's, here's the question uh, that I have. What does God want for Christmas from you? I think God wants something from all of us. What does he want from you? Well, let me give you some suggestions. Some of you have already been asked by God to do some things. For example, some of you are Sunday school teachers. Some of you are ushers. Some of you are on the pastor search committee. Some of you sing in the choir. You help with the wana. You help clean the church. Other things such as that. God has already asked you to do something before, so it seems to me that what God wants from you for Christmas is to be faithful in doing the very things that he has asked you to do. It's easy to start to slack off at Christmas time because you're busy, you're distracted, other things such as that. Or if you've done it for years and years and years, it's real easy just to kind of go through the motions of Christmas again. Uh, what God wants from you, if you're already doing something, is keep doing your best this Christmas. Now, for all of us, it may be that God is asking us to do something new. It may be that he says to you, okay, I'm asking you to start something. I want you to do something. Can I give you some suggestions? I don't know what God is saying to you, but this may uh, kind of stir your memory a little bit. It may be that there's a particular sin in your life that you've just been hanging on to, and God can see that it's just ripping up your life, and it really hurts him that you're hanging on to it. God may be saying to you, you know, it's time for you to get rid of that. That'll be your gift to me. Or it may be that you are facing a problem and it's just eating you up with worry. It has stolen your joy, it's stolen your peace. And so God says to you, I want that to change. I want you to face your hardship with faith that I am with you, that I am sovereign, that I can help you with all of this. You need to quit your worrying. I've got this for you. That may be what he's asking you to do. Or it may be something simple. Uh, you need to help with the living nativity. You need to help with the food pantry. We need people to be able to do that. Maybe that's what he's asking. Or it may be that he wants you to be a, Chris, a better Christian parent. I know this is something that Deb's been talking with the youth parents about. The main influence on the life of a child is their parent. Not Deb, not their Sunday school teacher, not me, but you. 
And you need to realize if God's going to work in the life of my child, I need to be a better Christian. I need to be a better Christian parent. Maybe that's what he wants. You lay aside your excuses and stuff like that. Let Deb do it. No, you do it. It may be that you are to invite a friend. Uh, I know some of you tell your friends, would you drive by Harrison Street Church on the 11th, anywhere between 6 and 8? I'm not going to tell you what's going on, but would you drive across there? And then the next week you talk with him. What did you see? You saw a nativity. You know what that means? That may be what God wants you to do. Uh, invite a friend to the puppet program on the 17th. Uh, a great, great time. On the 24th, uh, we, we have got a great choir put together between our two churches. It is so much fun to sing the praises of God at Christmas. Uh, maybe you need to be inviting a friend and say, you know, the preacher's not going to preach. The choir's going to sing. They may come to something like that, okay? Uh, or it may be to give to the Lighting Moon Christmas offering. Betty, what's your reaction to that? Yeah. Amen, that's right, praise Jesus, yeah. Give to Lighting or or do something radical, pray every day for the missionaries. You see, there are all kinds of things that God may be asking from you, and God says, congratulations, you have been chosen to do this. This is your gift to me, this is what I want from you for Christmas. All right, look at verse 34. Notice what Mary said. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? Notice what Mary said when God was clear to her what she was supposed to do. What did Mary say? She said, how can I have a baby? And what was her reason? What was her reason? She hadn't had sex. How could she have a baby? She knew exactly where babies came from, and she said, hey, I cannot do this. Now, that may be exactly what you are thinking as you think about God using you this year. You may be saying to yourself, how can I do this? I can't do this. Uh, you may be saying, I've never done it before. Uh, you may be saying, I'm too busy. Or maybe you're thinking, I'm not comfortable doing it. I've told you before, that is the most disgusting excuse that I ever hear about people not serving God. I'm not comfortable doing that. Well, how comfortable was Jesus on the cross? Not at all. How comfortable was Mary giving birth in a barn not at all. So comfort's got nothing to do with it. It's giving God a present, giving him what he needs to get his work done. So it's really important that you, you realize, just like Mary, you're thinking, how can I do this? I've got reasons. I've got excuses. Well, just like God gives you an answer when you start giving excuses, so God, through Gabriel, gave Mary the answer. Notice what the angel said. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. Gabriel's answer was short and to the point. Nothing complicated, just really simple. The angel Gabriel said, God's going to do it. You're not going to do it. You're not going to help in getting pregnant. God is going to do it. And then he says, God's going to help you just like he helped Elizabeth. Remember, Elizabeth was barren. She was too old to have kids. But what God wanted from her that Christmas was to give birth to a baby that would grow up and help get the world ready for Jesus. And so Gabriel uh, came to uh, Zachariah and Elizabeth and said, you've been chosen to give birth to a, a baby. Uh, God's going to help you conceive. It wasn't a virgin birth like with Mary. And so uh, God helped Elizabeth become pregnant. And uh, so uh, God said to Mary, hey, I'm going to do this, uh, and I've got an example. Well, that's exactly what God is saying to you as you think about what he wants this particular Christmas, God is saying to you that he is going to do it. You don't have to do the doing. 
You just show up, and he is going to do the doing. And he says, it's going to be okay. You're not going to fail. You're not going to be embarrassed. It's not going to be a terrible thing. It's going to be okay because God has helped a lot of people before doing the very thing that needs to be done. Uh, Betty, has, has God helped people uh, be generous and given to missions before? Sure he has. Uh, Ted, has God helped people be good Sunday school teachers? Absolutely. Uh, has anybody ever died doing the living nativity? Close? No. <laughs> That's not the answer I wanted. Was, yeah, it's chilly out there. Okay. God has helped people before. He can help you. Now, Look at verse 38. This talks about what Mary said. What was her reaction to all of this? I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. Notice what Mary did not say. Because some of you, this is what you tell God when he asks you to do something. Notice what Mary did not say. Mary did not say, okay, I got it figured out. I got it figured out. I'll take it from here. Is that what Mary said? God, just go your way. I don't really need your help. Got it figured out. I'll be okay. No, that's not what she said. Now, Mary could have said that. Now, stop and think with me. Mary's situation was pretty simple. If God needed a baby who was the descendant of David, Mary could do that, couldn't she? She was engaged to Joseph who was a descendant of David. They could get married, have a baby, and there it was. God had a descendant from David, and Mary did it herself. What do you think? Would that work? What do you think? So the question is, uh, would a baby with Joseph have worked? She could have taken over, had a baby, right? He'd be a descendant of David. Would that have worked? Come on, talk to me here. Why not? Descendant of David, that's what the Messiah was supposed to be. Why couldn't she do it herself? Okay, it would be Joseph's son. And is that what God wanted? No, God wanted God's son because Joseph's son could save nobody. And remember, that was the goal. So if Mary had done it herself, it would have turned out less than it needed to be. You see that? She could have had a baby, but it would not have been the same. Okay, what did Mary say? She didn't say, I'll take over, Mary, Joseph and I'll have a baby. What did she say? She said, I am the Lord's servant, and that simply means, tell me what to do. I'm submitting, I'll be obedient. You just tell me what to do, and I will do it, and you can work through me. If you were asked to land a 747, would you say, I'll take it from here? I don't need no help. Here's the cockpit of a 747. Does any of that make sense to you? There's not even a joystick on here. I kind of understand this, you know, that's kind of the, 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 the thing, okay. They show me the cockpit, you know what I'm going to say? Just tell me what to do. I can't figure this out, you just tell me what to do. That's what we need to do when God comes to us and says, you know what I want from Christmas? I want you to do something for me. Don't figure it out, don't try to control it, just do what I tell you to do. So here's the application. For your situation to turn out the way that it needs to, the way that God wants it, the way that you need it to be, is you can't figure it out, so don't try. Don't use your brain to figure out, okay, how do I do this? Also, you can't just refuse. No, God, I'm not going to do it. The answer is no, but that's not going to change anything. It'll still turn out the way it's supposed to, even if I don't help. So you can't figure it out, you can't refuse, or you will get something less than God needs. To get something less than what you need 
two. So you need to just tell God, you know, God, I can't figure this out. I can't do this myself. You just tell me what to do, and I will do it. Let me close with this note. I know what some of you are saying. It was easy for Mary to do that. She was a good Jewish submissive girl. It was easy for her to say, just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Did you realize that was not Mary's natural nature? Years later, as Mary was looking at what Jesus was doing, and her concept of what Jesus should be doing, she concluded Jesus was wrong. So she and the boys went and got Jesus, and they tried to bring him home and stop his ministry. He'd gone crazy. She tried to step in and to control it. Boy, I am really thankful that she did not do that at Christmas because that would have ruined everything. See, Mary had the same tendency you do. Take over, refuse, do what you want. Figure it out on your own. But praise God, she said, I'm not going to do that for Christmas. I hope that will be your answer too. Even if your tendency is to take control, be in charge, I hope this Christmas you will not do that. Instead, you will say, God, whatever you want, I'm going to do. Yes made everything possible that first Christmas. And your yes will make what God wants done this Christmas possible too. So I always give an invitation, inviting what you to do. Don't analyze what God wants. When you hear from him, don't analyze it. Uh, don't try to take over. Don't refuse to do it, thinking it'll just be okay. God's asking more than is really needed anyway. Instead, say, just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Of course, the biggest thing God wants people to do is to have a relationship with Jesus. Uh, maybe you've been in church, maybe you've been baptized, you've done all of that stuff, but there's never been a time in your life when you say, Jesus, you need to be my boss. Would you forgive me for waiting so long to give you control of my life? Would you forgive all the things that I did because I was in control? Uh, and would you come into my life and you take over and whatever you say I'll do and you change my life? If you've never done that, that's the first thing that God wants from Christmas is a relationship with you in which you come to him and say, I really want you to be in my life. I really want you to control things because I've really messed stuff up. Okay, so accept Jesus is the last invitation. Hey, let's stand and pray together before we sing. Heavenly Father, we look at our world and we say somebody needs to do something. And you say to us, exactly right. And you need to be that somebody. Father, I pray that uh, you've talked to us this morning, that uh, we will go home and find out what you want us to do to be a part of what you're doing this Christmas. Uh, you're working in our world. You need people to work through. Just like Mary said yes, we need to say yes. So I pray that... Uh, you can work in our hearts today and help us deal with all of those excuses that we have for not doing what you want and thinking things will be okay anyway. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.